Example four in section three, three. So let's determine a polynomial with real coefficients with degree four. So let's just immediately address degree four. So that means we'll have some function f of x. We'll have some constant out front, which we'll come back to in a second. We'll call that a n. And then degree four means we have four zeros. Um, they may not be real, right? They may be imaginary, but we have four factors, x minus c1, x minus c2, x minus three, c3, and x minus c4. And then we have a zero, x equals zero is a zero, and it has multiplicity two. So that means two of these are gonna become a zero. So a n, we get x minus zero, x minus zero. So that zero is a zero. And then square root of five is also a zero. So we'll put that for C3, x minus square root five. And then we recently learned that conjugates are zeros. So if square root five is a zero, then it's conjugate Negative square root five is also a zero. They always come in pairs. So then that final one will be x minus negative square root five. And then we'll try to figure out the coefficient later, the a n. So we'll use f of two equals negative four. We'll use this at the end. So let's do some simplifying and then come back to that. So we have f of x. Let's just leave a n as is. So x minus zero just means we get x. x minus zero just means we get x. And then we'll multiply x minus root five and x plus root five. So I'm gonna do it on a table on the side. Go ahead and multiply wherever you wanna multiply. And I get x times x is x squared. minus root 5x, and then we get root 5x, and then bottom right, square root 5 times square root 5 is 5, and then the negative sign makes it negative. So what's nice about conjugates is those middle terms will always cancel out. So this term will just be x squared minus 5. So we have a n times x squared times x squared minus 5, and then I'm just going to multiply it out so it looks more like um, a polynomial. So we get a n we get x to the fourth, and then we get minus 5x squared. So now we need to figure out what a n is. So before I solve for it, the reason we need a coefficient, um, let's check out Desmos. So I graphed a couple, so I just changed the coefficient. So I, the first graph I have is 2x to the fourth minus 5x squared. So maybe a n is 2. What if it's 5? Um, so if it's 5, yeah, the graph changes a little, but you'll notice the zeros don't change. We still have the same zeros. What if I change it to a negative coefficient, negative 5? Yeah, the graph flips upside down, right, but those zeros aren't changing. So that's why we don't know the coefficient. So all of those have the same zeros, no matter what a n is. A n just changes the shape a little, right? It might be steeper or less steep, right? Right, steepness or how wide it is, right? Something like that. So we'll use that condition. We call f of two equals 48 a condition. We'll use that to solve for a n. So we want to find the version of this graph that goes through the point to 48. So all of these had the same zeros, but I don't know that they all went through 248. So we'll go ahead and solve for that. So we're going to plug in 2 for x. So f of 2 means we get a n, which is unknown, 2 to the fourth minus 5 times 2 squared. And then that should equal 48, because that's my y value. So we're plugging in 2 for x, we're plugging in 48 for the output or y. So let's see, we get 2 to the 4th is 16, 
minus 5 times 4, which is 20, equals 48. So an times negative 4 is 48. Divide by negative 4, and you should get an is negative 12. So our final solution is the case where the coefficient is negative 12. So we could just change one of these to negative 12. And that is the graph we specifically want. I don't know why that point's on there. But you'll notice this one goes through the point to 48. You'll notice that's a point on this version. And that was probably not a point on the other versions. So the other versions all had the same zeros, but they didn't go through the point to 48. So hopefully that helps. So we'll just go ahead and write it out. f of x is negative 12 times x to the fourth minus 5x squared. So that would be the polynomial that satisfies the con conditions above. It has 0 at 0, and it has a 0 at root 5 and negative root 5. And it goes through the point 248. All right, let's jump into example five. We're going to find all the zeros, um, given that one is given. So we're going to find all the remaining zeros and give that complete factorization of x cubed minus 5x squared plus 17x minus 13, given that x minus 1 is a factor. So x minus 1 is a factor means 1 is a 0. So you can use long division um, or synthetic. I'm going to use synthetic, right? As long as the factor is linear, we can use synthetic. If you prefer long division, that's totally fine. Your choice. But I'm going to use synthetic. So I'm going to put the 1 out front, right? We put the 0 out front, and then we put the coefficients. So it'll be 1, negative 5. 17 and negative 13. Um, and then go ahead and try this. See how it's going. So we bring down the 1. 1 times 1 is 1. We go ahead and add. We get negative 4. And then we do 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. And then go ahead and combine. 13. 1 times 13 brings me to 13. And we should get zero, no remainder, right? Because it is a factor. So if we're getting a remainder, that means it's not a factor. So we should have gotten no remainder here. So since we started at x cubed, that means this new polynomial is x squared. So we have x squared minus 4x plus 13. And then times x minus 1 would be the factorization so far, right? x minus 1 was from the division, and then x squared minus 4x plus 13 is our new one. So for me, that one looks a little hard to factor. I can't really think of easy ways to multiply to get 13. So I'm going to go ahead and use that quadratic formula. So this is a good one to know. Watch YouTube songs and you'll memorize it. x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, where in this example, a is 1, b is negative 4, and c is 13. So I recommend getting some practice simplifying this um, without me. It'd be good practice, but here we go. So we get negative b, so negative negative 4 plus or minus negative 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 13 all over 2 times 1. All right, let's see. So we get we get negative negative 4 would be positive 4 plus or minus. Um, what do we get inside the square root? We get 16 minus 52 all over 2, which would be square, uh, which would be 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 36 all over 2. And we might remember that as an imaginary number, right? So the square root of 36 
is 6, so the square root of negative 36 is 6i. Right, that negative gives us an imaginary. So it'll be 4 plus or minus 6i all over 2. And then we can divide by 2 as long as we can divide everything by 2. So you can't just do 4 and 2. That's canceling terms. We need to be able to factor the 2 out. So if we factor the 2 out, we get 2 plus or minus 3i all over 2. So my last remaining zeros would be 2 plus or minus 3i. So we're going to try to write those as factors. So we know our zeros are 1 from the beginning, 2 plus 3i, and 2 minus 3i. And there's only there's three zeros because we had x cubed. So that's we know we have all the zeros now for th 3 degrees, three zeros. And then we're just going to write it in complete factorization. So it was originally x cubed minus 5x squared plus 17x minus 13. That's not factored. Factored would be x minus 1. x minus all this. So we're going to put 2 plus 3i in parentheses, x minus 2 plus 3i, and then x minus 2 minus 3i. And then I'm just going to distribute to get rid of the inside parentheses, and we'll be done with the complete factorization. So x minus 1, that one was given. And then we get x minus 2 minus 3i by distributing the negative, and then we get x minus 2 plus 3i. So this is considered a complete factorization. We have all three factors for a third degree polynomial. And that's example five.